really a full package. Sustainable, resilient communities are those that that respect the stewardship of, of the natural resource base. And Steve will, will explain it much better than I can. But you were in the you're you're a, a premier community in the Upper Mississippi. You have, if not annual, every three to four years, you have an international conference here on rivers. You've got a, a national group that's interested to come here and visit and, and do some studies. You've got almost every federal state agency has an office or a presence in this community. You have some of the most incredible um, prairies in addition to that. You've got this navigational system that, that serves two-thirds, uh, the watershed of the Mississippi is two-thirds of this country. The river is the fourth uh, biggest in the world, in the globe. It is a pretty impressive statistics. I hope you're proud of that. You, there, there's four eagle's nests, eagle nests, right here. Some of the best fishing in the country. It's a primary migratory uh, corridor for, for birds. Bird watching alone, birding it, I think is the proper term. I don't think that would be disrespectful. $52 million a year. I used to say $42 million. And I also said that it was a, a higher economic impact than NASCAR fans, and I was laughed at. Well, since I've been laughed at, it's been another $10 million, a billion. So I think you have to go to this. Yes. I, I won't be as poetic, I'll be more direct. If you if you don't capitalize on your place here and make this place uh, uh, the uh, the natural resource mecca that it is, and let people around the world know about it, give people access to the value you have here with constraints, so you don't abuse it with the additional access and affords people to attract. You're really missing something big. We were talking during the shred. You know, there's a there, there's uh, this is one of the largest flyaways on the planet. You know, 360 species of birds come through here at one point or another during a typical year. Um, Amy's husband saw a 97 on Saturday, Sunday or Saturday. Oh, his target was 100. He's off by a few. Uh, I saw three today that he probably missed. <laughs> we're, we're here three days ago. Um, this is a place that should have a national birding center. It's a place that should have a, a, a facility for letting everybody know about this great place. Um, when, I, when I come to the river, I want to learn about fish and clams and, and have a, a, a pearl industry, a button industry that, that was started here on the river with the clams, you know, punching buttonholes out of the uh, megala, megalaneus gigantea of the large. The large clam, it's the Latin, for those of you who want to know Latin. Uh, remarkable clam that will live you know, 75 to 150 years, according to the literature. And uh, he'll be a, a, a five to an eight pound creature. Uh, I want to learn about those creatures. They live down in the fastest current, in the deepest scour areas of this river. And, uh, you know, divers with bells still go down uh, and, and harvest those uh, down to Prairie du Chien. I want to learn about that. There's a lot of people around the world. I'm confident because this is still the largest supplier of cultured pearl uh, feedstock. The little, the little irritant uh, that's put inside the per the oysters to grow real pearls apparently uh, comes still from here uh, and some other places in North America. So real wonderful opportunities to learn and you can see I'm interested in these things. So how do you bring that sort of information to people? Um, the, the Smithsonian's exhibition called The Pearl was the single largest fundraising, single largest revenue producing exhibit that the Smithsonian Institution ever, has ever put on. You can look that up and you can look at the book they published called The Pearls. Uh, there's a remarkable history here that uh, very few people know about that uh, would be fascinating to, I don't think I'm alone. I'll shut up. <laughs> I'd like to uh, applaud the city's efforts and the money that they've spent to get it to this point. And, uh, but it looks like there's quite a bit of heavy lifting left to do here. Um, you know, these areas along the waterfront have to be cleared out and you know, two to three feet or four feet of fill is not 
a simple matter on a state this size. So, I mean, I guess I'd have to encourage the council and the, and the mayor here to, to, you know, bite the bullet and take the look at the long run here, because there's going to be a lot of expense before we get to the point where you can issue a building permit for any of this stuff. And it's got to come in the front end. Too, because you, know, you can't develop until the streets are in. You can't put the streets in until the four feet of fill is in. You can't tell people their houses on the waterfront until they can see the waterfront. So I guess I'd say to both the city and the, and the residents, hang in there and <laughs> stay with the plan. It's still going to be a few more years. But thanks for what you've done so far. Yeah, I think the city's been very fortunate. I know what we got. Uh, $250,000 grant from the DNR to clean up the environmental contamination. The city matched that along the Petro's property. Uh, the engineering department helped us get some fill from the Dresback uh, bridge project. So we got a lot of free fill. Uh, so we're paying attention to every uh, development project at UWL or two hospitals, something that can provide fill. Um, you know, but there's also other opportunities with dredging and things like that. So yeah, there's still a long way to go. But I think this is a, a key, a very important first step. And I think we've, we've made a big, huge step forward with this process. Right. Another right. question. Right. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Um, one second. Yeah, if, if I could just have two seconds. I, I apologize. Uh, I want you to be more, I, th those are really important things to, to understand and say, OK, this is a challenge. But I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I worked on uh, uh, Sheboygan South. About 42 acres. Uh, it was eight feet of fill. Special geotechnical lightweight uh, fill as well. 200 room uh, hotel, 40,000 square foot water park. Uh, the shanties are starting to fill in. There's five or six restaurants that weren't there. It took us about four years from the from the community process, the consensus, alternative plans, uh, to actually do the construction drawing. To, reconstructed the beach and restored the beach, boardwalks, bike path, rebuilt the bulkhead, complete perimeter public access, about $22 million acquisition, streets, trees, little plazas, beach, things like that. So it's, it's hard work, it's a challenge, but they put in eight feet of fill, four years they had a, a serious tax base going. The hotel alone, uh, uh, over a million and a half hotel effect, 350 uh, I don't know how many people are employed by the restaurants. There's an eco, uh, uh, ki uh, kayak and bicycles. The charter fishing fleet is still there. So you can do it. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to compliment you on the fact that um, the discussion there was about maybe about 90% of this development being residential. And it's about time we, we switch gears from the, the commercial um, tips that we've done for the last 30 years really push something that's mostly residential, and I want to compliment you on that. It just surprised me. I, I didn't expect to see this when I came here tonight. Now, then moving beyond that, I want to ask a specific question. Is this already in the, the TIF boundary of, of what's across the street right now? Yeah. So, and because you're starting with just basic land, I mean, a lot of TIFs is just maybe a quarter of it or a third of it is new development. Here it's like 100% new development. And if it takes off fast, which you just said it should, I mean, I took $90 million, and the majority of those assessments should be tax dollars would be returned to the TIF versus going in right away to the schools and the state and the county to pay, to pay for their infrastructure. $90 million would be about, two, once you got there, even if it takes 10 years, that's $2.5 million a year in tax revenue. That's, this is probably be your fastest paying off TIF ever. I'm not normally a favorite of tips, but I, I like I like what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> I know.